Looks like someone has chalked the front of the courthouse with the word love and a peace sign. And this is where Kelly will be having her trial for chalking the side of that courthouse there with the words free a demo and a peace sign. So she's facing a class B misdemeanor in Manchester Courthouse, I believe this is a district courthouse, and uh, she faces up to $1,200 in fines, uh, which would translate to 24 days in jail for doing essentially this over there. It was so pretty. I, what? The I did. Outside? Get yeah, your film in. Someone shot. Outside the building? Yes, outside the building. It must have been recent. I yeah, it was, well, it was actually yeah. on the ground. I would have watched it. I wasn't about to drive away talking. That's who we're waiting on, Kelly. Who? The cops are waiting for but, well, they're wasting my time. Do, not, do, they not, do, do, do they not think that my time is just as valuable as theirs? In fact, I would say mine is more valuable, valuable because I'm out trying to achieve liberty, and they're out trying to suppress it. Would you like to drop the prosecutor's office? They can just drop the charges now if you want. We don't have to do this. We can all go home. Would your boss get mad if you drop the charges, John? Order. Please be seated. The city of New Hampshire versus Lynn Siarski. If the parties are ready to proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Face Calls Deputy Chief of the Manchester Fire Department, Mr. Daniel Goonan. You swear that the testimony you're about to give to this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Daniel Goodman. I'm a deputy chief with the Manchester Fire Department, currently church and in charge of uh, administration. Uh, we were called at approximately 11.29 to assist the Manchester Police Department um, with removing some uh, chalking. So looks like we spent approximately 15 minutes um, washing the chalk from the building. And how is it that um, your employees physically accomplish that? How do you begin the process of washing chalk from the Manchester Courthouse? What we would do is we'd um, basically pull a, uh, a line, a water line from the truck, and use as much water as we need to uh, remove the truck. So a Manchester Fire uh, Department fire engine arrived on scene? Yes, sir. And do you have an approximate number of uh, Manchester Fire employees Yes, but that particular apparatus, Engine 11, we have four. We have an officer and three firefighters. And do your internal business records, are you able to give us an approximate um, cost or uh, value for the time spent during that time frame that you just mentioned at the Manchester Court? Sure. What we, what, our, our, what we do is generally we charge uh, $125 an hour. Uh, we spend 15 minutes, but we do have a minimum of four hours. Okay, and is that when you say 125 per hour, is that the total sum per hour? Or are you indicating that's, that's, that? that's the total sum? That's the, that's the charge for the fire truck to respond, and uh, as well as the manpower, because they were on straight time, in other words, they were working. Okay, and did they uh, accomplish, does it appear from your paperwork, yes, did they accomplish what they it were? Like they, uh, they accomplished that task, uh, and uh, then they called the, um, the highway department to uh, provide a service by putting some salt down because it was the middle of winter. Shaking reasons. Thank you, sir. No further questions at this time, Your Honor? No, Are no, you no. saying that there was damage done to uh, the, 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 prop, the property, uh, this property, 35 hours straight? No, ma'am. Uh, what I'm saying is we were called by the Manchester uh, Police Department to assist them with washing chalk from this Were you there? Facility. No, sir. No, no ma'am. My records do not indicate that there was damage done. It took 15 minutes. To wash the chalk off the building? We're, we, we're, we're dispatched and we went back in the service in 15 minutes. And do you swear that the testimony you're about to give to this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So, how you got? I do. Uh, my name is Walter B. Feldhouse. I'm a police officer with the city of Manchester, Michigan. And you're on a routine patrol and you're in the area, and what catches your attention, if anything? Uh, the, uh, there was a young lady drawing on this side of the courthouse. As I was approaching, she 
kind of squatted down and was writing in light blue uh, <clears throat> chalk. You could tell at that time that you, you at least believed it to be um, chalk was the writing instrument, so to speak, at the time? Yes. Can you describe for us why it is? How do you come to the conclusion that you're going to park and exit your vehicle? She's, draw, she's drawing on the side of the courthouse. And I walk up the stairs and ask her what she thought she was doing or what she was writing on the courthouse. Do you recall any specifics of what was being drawn or written, what the markings were? My, rec my recollection was a free ademo. Do you see the individual who you personally observed using chalk uh, on the courthouse building? Do you see that person in the courtroom today? I do. Uh, her hair's a little different. The uh, makeup's a little different, but that's uh, the young lady here. She said uh, they're putting my friends in cages. After asking her what she was doing, and she told me they put my friends in cages after that? Correct. What happened after that? I told her she was under arrest and uh, placed her in handcuffs. And ultimately was transported to the nation's police station? Yes, sir. She had a box of chalk with her, and then there was another light box of chalk. I picked them up and brought them back to the police station. Did you take any steps to memorialize the actual writing that you had observed on the building? Uh, I did. Uh, did you have any information as to who made the decision in terms of cleanup of the chalk that you had observed? Initially, we were going to have the uh, city do it, and then uh, the building services for the court uh, wasn't sure that that was going to be uh, appropriate, so they checked with their uh, their powers to be, and then the decision came back that the city would, in fact, clean it. Uh, I guess the graffiti uh, squad, as they're known, uh, was going to come down and do it, but their machine was broken. Okay. And the fire department eventually responded. Thank you, officer. There's no further questions at this time, Your Honor. Officer Feldhaus, you believed that uh, it was chalk that I had had in my hand. Well, I know it was chalk when I eventually got to you. The defense would like to uh, place a motion to dismiss based on McKinney versus Nielsen, Ninth Circuit Court, California, that says no reasonable person could think that writing with chalk would damage a sidewalk. There's two charges. One of them uh, has the element of, of damage. It's the state's position that it is damage. The state would respectfully suggest that, if I understand the argument correctly, as to whether or not chalk that the officer Feldhaus has testified about, whether or not that's legally sufficient in terms of meeting the element of damage that's required by the statute. The state would, if it would be helpful to the court, would welcome the opportunity to have an opportunity to submit a memo with respect to damage. I will give the parties 10 days. So are you saying that I did damage to a piece of property? Objection, same argument, same uh, basis as before, whether or not there's damage to a piece of property as required by statute is asking this witness to make a legal conclusion that would be within the province of the judicial branch to make a call as to whether or not um, there's legally sufficient testimony to support a finding of damage uh, to property. I'm simply trying to uh, form a basis. The issue of asking an to opine on the legal element itself is objectionable as it constitutes invasion into the ultimate decision-making process of the court. The precise question you've asked, therefore, on that basis, is one that the court must sustain. Is the chalk still on the building? I didn't see any there today. I saw some on the sidewalk. Well, would you say that the building is most likely in the, I mean, it's in, in the exact same state of being as it was before I ever came to the Manchester District Court building on January 9th? I suppose it could be. So tell me, uh, Mr. Feldhaus, um, do you believe that I had a reasonable basis to believe that I had a right to do what I was doing, based on our conversation? If I believe that you believed it. Again, Your Honor, that is a, again, part of the statutory elements, and that is, again, asking Officer Feldhaus, as a police officer who is a responder and a witness to the incident, to be in a position to draw a legal conclusion as to the legal element of whether or not um, the individual has a, a basis of the proper authority to engage in the act that she did. Yeah. I disagree with that because the statute states 6342 criminal mischief, a person is guilty of criminal mischief who, having no right to do so, nor any reasonable basis for belief of having such a right, 
purposely or rec recklessly damages property of another. This is evidence that's necessary to prove this case. That is an issue for ultimate determination by the court. I'm going to sustain the objection. You stated that you, you asked me why I was writing on the walls. I said because my friends were being put into cages. Correct? Generally, yes. It's accurate. Do you think that's a reasonable basis for belief that what I was doing was right? The question of whether or not the officer can opine on whether there's a reasonable person would believe that it's a, a legal conclusion under the statute. The issue, ma'am, is you're asking individuals to provide legal conclusion. Were you aware at that time that I'm an activist? That you're aware? That I'm an activist. I suppose, uh, well, I guess I didn't know you were, but after you wrote on the wall, I did. So you were aware at that time that I'm an activist? Well, I guess generally people that write things on the walls want to be heard. And I don't know if they're activists or graffiti artists. Okay. Were you aware that I'm a Christian? Objection. Uh, basically relevant to <clears throat> I don't understand how your religious belief advances the notion of a defense. I have no further questions. Let's take call Officer Kelly McKinney. And what was the nature of your reason for responding? Uh, to take photographs of graffiti on the buildings. There are several people standing around with cameras and then I saw the graffiti on the walls of the retaining wall of the handicap ramp and the outside wall of the courthouse. Uh, did you take the photographs of the chalk on the building as you described? Yes. When you arrived at the here at the Manchester District Court building today, was the chalk still on the wall? Today? Yes. No answer. Was there any trace of the chalk shown in those pictures on no the wall? Way. No further questions. State Calls Security Officer Dana Rainier. How are you employed, sir? Uh, State of New Hampshire is a court security guy. Uh, duties include <clears throat> security within the building for the employees as well as the public as well as maintaining the physical part of the building so that there's no obstructions or any damage to it. I went out, uh, somebody told me there was somebody writing with chalk outside the building, so I went from the desk out to the front stoop and observed a person. But I asked what she was doing. And she answered me with a question, uh, why are you putting my people in cages? And there was a marked police cruiser right around the corner. I whistled to it and waited for the cruiser to come over. And then is it accurate that Manchester police and Officer Feldhouse essentially took over the, uh, the lead in the investigation, so to speak? Correct. Thank you, sir. Nothing more, Your Honor. Did you hear me tell Officer Feldhouse that I was happy to clean up the chalk? Yes. Thank you. No further questions. State calls Detective Timothy Craig. Yes, my uh, main uh, job at the Manchester Police Department being assigned to the Juvenile Division, I am a computer forensic examiner for the New Hampshire Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, a network intrusion analyzer for U.S. Secret Service, as well as a computer forensic examiner for the Department of Homeland Security uh, slash HSI, which is Homeland Security Investigations uh, Computer Unit. So basically I do computer forensics, cell phone analysis, and video uh, surveillance equipment. I received the, uh, uh, an inquiry from you to uh, check the uh, freeandkeen.com uh, uh, website to, for some type of uh, posting on there about some, an incident that happened here at the Manchester District Court. And did that involve, did, well, were you able to find a video of the event um, involving the chalking at this courthouse? Yes, I did. I found it. It was a YouTube post. Uh, it was titled, Kelly Arrested in Manchester. If I can maybe show you uh, a video, which I'm going to show you in a second, about two minutes long. <laughs>
Thank you for your Where did you find that video? Off of freeking.com and brought it to a hyperlink to the YouTube channel. Did you do any research on the background of freeking.com? I have no clue or care why I was brought right to that website to get that video. That's it. What does it say on the top of freeking.com? I have no idea. I really don't care. Could it possibly say something like peaceful evolution? I know you. Were you aware that mainly uh, activists blog in there? Were you aware of that? I really don't uh, know the background of your organization and what it means. I know that you guys go around and uh, take videos of stuff and you make it easier for me to bring it into court. Being that you're a detective, you're, 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 you're an expert on these things, correct? I am actually. So you're not used to, you see this often? Uh, many people re uh, record their crimes and put them on YouTube and other uh, websites, yes. Then they must have some reason for doing this, right? I have no idea. I have no further questions. I understand you're going to testify. Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give to this court will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? So help me God. So help you God. Thank you. What I am being charged with here is um, criminal mischief. A person is guilty of criminal mischief who having no right to do so, nor any reasonable basis for belief of having such a right, purposely or recklessly damages the property of another. I had an absolutely reasonable basis to believe that I had a right to do what I was doing. My friends were in here being sentenced to time in a cage simply for chalking on another building over the summer and attempting to hold government bureaucrats accountable for their actions. There is nothing wrong with that. That is a constitutionally protected right. Yet my friends were up here being thrown in a cage. I do believe that I had a right to do what I was doing. I didn't damage anything. I offered to wash the chalk off. You all heard me on video saying that I was happy to do it. Yet, Officer Feldhaus chose to take me to a cage instead. This doesn't seem right, does it? I don't believe it's right. According to the New Hampshire Constitution, Article 4, right of conscience is inalienable. Among the natural rights, some are in their very nature unalienable because no equivalent can be given or received for them. Of this kind are the rights of conscience. I believe that was doing the right thing. I moved here to New Hampshire to do the right thing. I had the right to do what I did on January 9th. Article 10, New Hampshire Constitution, right of revolution. Government being instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security of the whole community and not for the private interest or a moment of any one man, family, or class of men. Therefore, whenever the, the, whenever the ends of government are perverted and public liberty manifestly endangered and all other means of redress are ineffectual, the people may, and of right, ought to reform the old or establish a new government. The doctrine of non-resistance against arbitrary power and oppression is absurd, slavish, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. The action that I took when I chopped on the building was simply my small way of resisting against arbitrary power, tyranny, and oppression. I was exercising my right to free speech. I was exercising my right to peaceful redress of grievance. I was exercising my right to my religious beliefs. I did not damage any property. I stand behind my actions. Any cross-examination? No, Your Honor, no questions. As I understand the issues, there are three. The issue of damage, the issue of right or reasonable basis to believe they have a right, and finally, the issue of whether free speech authorizes the conduct. First Amendment. You have 10 days to submit. I will take the matter under advisement.